Hey everybody, my name is Fletcher Stump and welcome back to Radioactive Inc. So, when this video is uploaded, it's going to be Christmas Eve. So, first off, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Please enjoy your holiday, please be safe. Don't do anything reckless, you know, don't drink and drive. Please don't drink and drive. If you're underage, please don't go out drinking, I mean, that's against the law. So, with it going to be Christmas, the next day after this video is uploaded, we're going to be talking about the Christmas gifts we all wish that we could have. Fallout weapons. Because I know I don't want them. But specifically, we're going to be talking about Fallout 4 weapons. Now, what I'm going to be doing is a top 10 of my personal favorite top 10 Fallout weapons. Uh, if you have your own personal favorites, please feel free to leave them in the comments section for me. And, you know, we'll, we'll see who likes what. So... We're going to start this off at number 10. At number 10 is the Junk Jet. Now, the Junk Jet is very low on this list because, well, it didn't do a whole lot of damage. The range wasn't very good. It was a very heavy weapon. So, though you got it early on in the game, it did complicate it a little bit with the weight because with the weapon being so heavy, it was very hard to lug around. Uh, you couldn't really carry much extra stuff because of everything you already had. But the uh, the Junk Jet does make it onto this list because if you had the Junk Jet, you could just store all of your junk in it until you got back to like Sanctuary or wherever you were going and you could put it in the workbench. So that's why the Junk Jet is on this list. At number 9, we have the Shish Kebab. Now, everybody knows the Shish Kebab from Fallout 3. It is the fiery sword of death that they changed the design on a little bit. You don't need like all the parts you needed last time. Now, uh, I don't really use the shish kebab all that much due to the fact that it is a melee weapon and I've kind of been walking around in power armor since the beginning of the game, mostly because fusion cores are so abundant that I don't really see a point in not taking power armor. So, uh... The, I mean, the shish kebab is on the list because it's a fiery sword of death, which is just insanely awesome. Who wouldn't want one of those? <laughs> I know I want one. Uh, moving right along to number eight, we have the vaporizing flamer. It's a flamethrower. Come on now. Every good game has got to have a flamethrower. I keep it right there on my, uh, on my select weapons just in case I ever need it real quick if I'm, uh, if I'm fighting like bugs, that I, I just whip that right out and I start, you know, hitting them with flames to try and kill them off pretty quickly. Uh, upgraded, it does do more damage, but you do sacrifice the range for it. But I can live with that. I, I think that's, you know, I think that's a pretty fair trade-off. More damage for a little bit less range, I can live with that. <laughs> At number seven, we have the Ash Maker. Now, the Ash Maker is just a minigun that lights people on fire. <laughs> a lot of fire-based weaponry. Let's face it, lighting people on fire in video games is fun. Uh, the Ash Maker is just a minigun. Now, it's so low on the list, though it does have, you know, a lot of damage to it. It is very effective. The reason it's so low is because of the fact that you kind of run through ammo like really quick. I mean, if you have 500 rounds and you're fighting a lot of enemies, those 500 rounds go really quick. Which, uh, I mean, though it is good to use, I, I would like, you know, a little bit of more bang for my buck. You know what I'm saying? So, that is, that's why it's number seven on the list. Number six on the list is the Cryolator. Or the Cryo Gun. You know, if you don't feel like saying cryolator, I just call it cryo gun. Now the cryolator is uh, like the first like big scale weapon you run into in the game. Uh, when you're exiting the vault you see it sitting there and you have to come back for it later when you have a high enough lock picking skill. Now at first the gun is very subpar. Uh, it, you know it does freeze things which is effective if you need to get a little bit of range between you and whatever it is you're fighting. But uh, when you upgrade it, 
that's when it really kicks in because the damage really ups and it freezes the freezing lasts just a little bit longer so you're able to get more distance between you and the enemy which is very effective especially since you can freeze them back off switch to another gun and you know let all hell break loose which is fantastic so that is why the cryolator is number six on the list at number five on the list we have the enraging powerful 44 pistol um, well, let's face it, it, it's an awesome gun. It's very useful to have. It's a, it's a close range weapon. So if you're fighting something like uh, ghouls, it's very useful to have because ghouls just love to get right up in your face and, you know, like back you in the corner so you can't get out. Uh, I use it a lot. I have upgraded it uh, about as much as I can. The last thing I can do to it is put a scope on it. But I probably won't do that because, well, it. It's a 44 pistol. I, I don't really see the point in putting a scope on it. So, I, I use it a lot. I always make sure I have 44 ammo. Because uh, I always, I usually always know I'm going to be fighting ghouls somewhere along the line. So, it's, it's very useful to have. At number four, we have the High Capacity Goss Rifle. This thing is a beast of a weapon. Starting off with regular damage of like 116, then if you upgrade it, it's 136. Upgrade it again, it goes up to 151 for a single shot. Now that is just awesome. Now there, there are a few things I do not like about the gun uh, due to the fact that uh, it, it's very hard to get headshots with it. Due to the fact that the, you know, the enemies do move around a lot and the shot's going at a, at a pretty decent speed. So the uh, the aiming is, yeah, yeah you know. Um, but I, I do love the fact that uh, it does it has a charge rating for a more powerful shot, which is very useful. Uh, fully upgraded. I mean, this gun is just a beast of a gun. It makes an awesome sniper rifle if you put a scope on it. So I I'd recommend keeping that thing around. Now the. <laughs> The really sad part is, is that I found it, I was like, yes, this is awesome, and then I go into a uh, railroad area, and they're just abundant. They're all over the place. Everybody's using one. I was like, aww, that's no fun. But I, I, I do love it. I, I'm definitely going to keep that gun. Uh, I find it to be highly effective. Now, at number three... We have the Mutant Slayer's Quad Barrel Missile Launcher. Now, uh, the reason I picked the uh, Mutant Slayer's over the regular missile launcher is due to the fact that I fight quite a lot of super mutants. I mean, I, I, I travel all over the Commonwealth doing, you know, random missions, and most of the time they're super mutants. And I don't feel like wasting my other ammo to try and kill them off when it's going to expend more shots. Meanwhile, I could fire one missile, and that'd be that. Now, uh, the quad barrel on it is highly effective. It's very useful because, I mean, you get four shots out of it. So it's not just one shot, reload, one shot, reload. And then if you equip the stabilizer onto it, it works a lot better because, I mean, you have that tighter grouping for your accuracy, so you're more likely to land your shot which is fantastic. I mean, that that's definitely, definitely what you want. So, at number two, we have the Marksman 308 Combat Rifle. I love this gun. I absolutely love this gun. This gun has gotten me out of some really near-death near -death situations in this game. Two shots on pretty much anything, and it's dead. Most things, if you just shoot it in the head with one shot, down it goes. I love this gun. I always make sure I have 3 ammo stocked up, whether I have to go out and sell some stuff and buy it, or if I have to steal it off of somebody. I have always got 3 ammo for this gun. I love it. Upgraded, it becomes a really badass sniper rifle, which, I mean... That is awesome, because if I upgrade it to the sniper rifle, I'm getting rid of my sniper rifle. I, uh, I have one of those, uh, those pipe pistol sniper rifles with, like, uh, the night vision scope, because it seems every time I fast travel somewhere to go do something, it's always nighttime. So I was like, eh, night vision scope will probably work out better for me. 
And don't get me wrong, the pipe pistol sniper rifle it does a good amount of damage. It has a decent range to it. It is effective, but you want something with that power and that kick that puts something down in one to two, three shots at the most. And from what I've seen, the 308 Marksman Combat Rifle does that with pretty much anything, which is fantastic. <laughs> Alright, so before I tell you what number one is, let's do a quick recap here. At number 10, we've got the Jump Jet. At number 9, we have the Shish Kebab. Number 8, we have the Vaporizing Flamer. Number 7, the Ash Maker. Number 6, the Cryolator. Number five, the Enraging Powerful 44 Pistol. At number four, the High Capacity Goss Rifle. At number three, the Mutant Slayer Quad Barrel Missile Launcher. At number two, the Marksman's 308 Combat Rifle. And at number one, I know you all saw it coming because I guarantee it's your favorite weapon too. It is the gift that keeps on giving and something we wish we could all have for those moments where we just want to wipe something off the face of the earth. I'm talking about the big boy that fired mini nukes. And if you add the upgraded Merv to it, which you, is a pain because you got to have gun nut rank four and a science rank of seven. But if you get it, it is so worth it because when you fire that bad boy, Two rounds split off, boom, ten rounds raining down on whatever it is. Now, initially the uh, the rounds do less damage than the single rounds fired originally without the upgrade, but when you have nine rounds coming at your face, it doesn't matter. You're going down. I love it. The only issue is <laughs> mini nukes are not very abundant. They are in specific locations, but an interesting thing I found out. Uh, if you actually wait a week in game time, and then go back to where you got the, the mini nuke you had, it'll be sitting there again. So, mini nukes are unlimited, they're just not grouped together all that well. So, that tells me I need to make a trip back to Fort Strong where there's too many nukes sitting on a table waiting for me to pick them up. So... <laughs> Those were my top 10 favorite Fallout 4 weapons. Let me know yours down in the comments, because I want to know what you think is the best weapon, and I also want to know what you think is the worst weapon in the game. But uh, thank you for joining me for this. Again, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Please be safe. Don't drink and drive. Make sure that you are careful. It is going to be cold. Make sure you're bundled up. Uh, Remember to please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And uh, we are trying to hit 50 subscribers. It is just for us. We have a 10 pound bag of croutons that is either going to get dumped on Etch-A-Sketch or myself. And you guys get to pick who it's going to get dumped on. Now remember, as we get closer to hitting 50 subscribers, we're going to be adding things that will get dumped on us such as marshmallow fluff and honey and so on and so forth until we just have this big conglomerate mess that'll get dumped on one of our heads. But until then, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Fletcher Stump with Radioactive Inc. Signing off. I came to party